Matthew's Gospel chapter 1, we're back on the spirit within. I almost said in the spirit by the spirit. The spirit within and the spirit upon. And as we usually do, uh, we talk about the church, the local assembly. Repetition always breeds conviction. That's why we keep saying it till it's clear enough. Last week I spoke about um, what brings unity in the local assembly. The, the local assembly's greatest asset is unity. Division will always ensure that the vision of the local assembly is not fulfilled. Division simply means when, not just when we have different opinions, division means that where it, that difference on any issue whatsoever now causes a different focus uh, to all of us or you know, at each of us or whatever way we look at it. So when we disagree, we must always pursue to agree. A believer must pursue unity. Said that over time. We must pursue unity. God wants us to, particularly in the local assembly. I repeat myself, the greatest asset in the local assembly is not the depth of their teaching, or the miracles that flow in there, all of that can have no effect if everyone has a different focus in that local assembly. So you must pursue it. You must uh, walk at it. Uh, even in the family units, uh, in friendships, you must pursue unity so that you all have the same focus. Now, how do we achieve that? Last week, we looked at how you must submit to and acknowledge the same leadership. Now, today, I want to talk about another thing. Uh, how to achieve unity generally, and that's also the local church, is by prayer. Prayer makes us united when we pray for one another. Let me mention this. Now, I know I posted it on my Facebook yesterday. One of the easiest ways or, you know, most effective ways to receive from your pastor is when you pray for your pastor often. If you pray for your pastor often, you position yourself to receive from, apart from the fact that the prayer helps him as well. The prayer strengthens your pastor and all that, but the prayer also, however, the prayer also allows you uh, or gives you that, as it were, resource to receive from the pastor. The same thing with believers. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, in fact, I'll read two texts. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, where Paul, one we read last week, where he says in verse 13, to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace amongst yourselves. Now exhort your brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble mind and support the weak, be patient towards all men. 1 Thessalonians 5, see that none renders evil for evil unto any man, but follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Then he says, pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. Now, as though that was not enough, verse 25, brethren, pray for us. The emphasis on prayer in the same paragraph is so obvious that you cannot miss it. Pray for us. Pray without ceasing. Pray for us. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, it says, praying always. Someone say always. I didn't hear you. All the time, with all prayer, <coughs> excuse me, and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me. So you see that in the two texts, it talks about praying and then praying for him, praying for all believers. Anyone you pray for sincerely. It will be very difficult to gossip the person or wish the person evil. In Matthew 5, 44, Jesus says, Bless them that curse you. He says, Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Do good to them that have done evil to you. That's what he says. Which means prayer is part of us doing good and also exercising the love of God. So in a local assembly, we must learn to pray for one another. 
You see, some people like to gossip. Gossip is a simple statement. Uh, it's a simple activity. It just means that something about someone you relate to another person. That's all gossip is about. You just want to talk to someone about another person. Uh, no matter the subject matter, it's gossip. The Bible doesn't instruct us to gist about each other. It says to pray for one another. I believe a Christian in a local assembly should pray for members of his church on a daily basis. That means on a daily basis, you must have a prayer pattern where you pray for members of your cell group, in this church, your pastoral care fellowship, of course, the local church generally. When you maintain that, what you are doing eventually is maintaining unity in the church, unity of purpose, focus, and eventually we're able to accomplish that which God wants us to do. So I instruct you today to ensure that you pray for believers in your local assembly. Pray for your pastor as well. Usually, we get to become uneasy, strife with people we are no longer praying for. You must ensure that you pray for those uh, who are in your local church. And you know, if you're a pastor too, you must pray for people more than you want to correct them. You must pray for people more than you want to teach them and give them insight into the word. You must pray for people more often than you want to engage them on any issue whatsoever. So prayer helps us focus and keep a united spirit in the local church. Did that bless you? Did that bless you? Hallelujah.